my name is Darlene Fenton, Chair of the Board, and this is the first open meeting of the Halifax Regional Water Commission Board for the matters that are brought before it. Um, before we begin, Halifax Water would like to acknowledge that we are in the Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This, more, this meeting is open to the public and is streaming live online via Halifax Water YouTube page. The agenda and staff reports for this meeting are posted on the Halifax Water website and hard copies of the agenda are available in the vestibule. Before we begin with the items on the agenda, I have some general information for the benefit of those attending. Gender neutral washrooms are located out through the meeting room door uh, turn right through the vestibule door and then turn left bathrooms are on the right hand side. In the case of an emergency, the exit route is through the main door that you entered uh, when you arrived. If, you are if we are required to evacuate the building, the gathering or muster point is at the south end of the parking lot associated with this building. Please look for the black and white muster station sign located on the pole in the back of the parking lot. Um, there is water in cups available at the back of the room. Um, if anyone would like to have some water to drink, we ask that you not um, uh, eat or, or drink anything else while the meeting is taking place because it can be disruptive. We ask that, um, that you please ensure that your phones and other devices are set to silent and quiet mode. Yeah, I'll check, <laughs> make sure we've done that. Uh, and that you uh, refrain from uh, uh, speaking too loudly as it will dis uh, disrupt the meeting and we want the people at home that are looking at this via the online to be able to hear. As, we, as I've just said that the meeting is being um, recorded and if we have any media here obviously they can re record but we ask that no other recording uh, be permitted and that the meeting is streaming live online and archived version of the videos as well as information on how to request permission to use the video will be available on the Halifax Water website one hour after the conclusion of this meeting. The meeting is open to the public for observation purposes only. There will be other opportunities for people if they want to make comments. There's some of these cards that are out there for anyone that are here in the room that how to get in touch with Halifax Water as well as we are having an AGM on July 18th. So there's opportunities for those that want to come and have um, ask questions of the board can do so. And any member of the public who is disruptive at the meeting will be asked to stop and if it continues will be asked to leave. I will now call this meeting to order and begin with the approval of the agenda. <coughs> Ratification of in-camera motion. The move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none. Motion carried. Approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. A second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none. Motion carried. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held on Thursday, March 28, 2019. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second by Colleen. Colleen. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Approval of the minutes of the special meeting held on Wednesday, May 22, 2019, with an amendment that we acknowledge that the delegate for Jacques Dubay was uh, Brad Ang. We should be added to that, those meeting minutes. May I have a motion, please? With the amended minutes. With the amended minutes, please. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Business arising from the minutes. It's a 2019-20 corporate uh, balance scorecard, organizational indicator, target revision. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, two items there related to the Corp Balance Scorecard. When we first put together our projected targets uh, for this year, uh, we were going to the best information at the time. Um, some good news report on one of the targets was water loss control. That's our ability to stem leakage in the distribution system. Our original target uh, was set at uh, 
180 to 190, but our final results uh, came in um, last year at 171 liters per service connection per day. And as a result, the new target range will be set from 160 to 170 liters per service connection per day. So it's a good news story that we had a good uh, outcome last year, but we will push ourselves to do better uh, this year. So a new target there. Also, uh, there was a, a typo in the um, employee satisfaction survey outcomes. Our target actually is for an outcome of an A minus uh, target score versus um, uh, a B plus. So A minus is a target for, uh, for employee satisfaction. So with those two, I'd ask for the board's uh, uh, blessings to amend the core balance scorecard with those two indicators as noted. Okay, so we'd like to have a motion that's on the floor to change the two organizational indicators as noted for the corporate balance scorecard. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. So you have your new targets are set for this coming year. We're good. Yeah. So the next section of the meeting is on the financial. And uh, the 2018-19 audited financial <laughs> statements and year-end results. It is recommended the board approve the March 31st, 2019 Halifax Regional Water Commission's audit financial statements prepared using international finance financial reporting standards. I'll so move. Second. And we can have the presentation. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Kathy O'Toole. I'm the uh, corporate treasurer to the board. And we have with us today John Maloney from Grant Thornton in the audience, who is the senior audit partner who works on our file. On behalf of Halifax Water, I'd like to thank Grant Thornton for their work on the audit this year. Everything was conducted in a very timely and efficient manner. So I'm pleased to report that we have a clean audit opinion. The full financial statements and a more detailed presentation went to the Audit Committee on June 14th and the Audit Committee did approve the financial statements and recommend that they be brought to the Halifax Water Board. This year we have a surplus of $16.1 million under international financial reporting standards or $400,000 under URB handbook standards. And I'm going to explain in a slide or two why there's two different reporting methods and reconcile between the two sets of numbers. But essentially, because Halifax Water is wholly owned by the municipality, we have to report in IFRS so we can be consolidated with the municipality's financial statements. And for rate making purposes or regulatory purposes, we're required by the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board to follow the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board accounting handbook for water utilities. So the differences between those really relate to one is more or less a cash basis of accounting, which is the URB handbook. And the IFRS basis of accounting includes some different items on an accrual basis that you wouldn't see in the URB handbook. And there are some items that move between the income statement and the balance sheet, depending upon which method of accounting you're using. So in our financial statements, the financial statements are prepared and audited based on IFRS. But in the back section of the financial statements, there's schedules A to G that actually show our URB accounting reporting handbook. When we're doing reporting to the board or reporting to the URB, what's more meaningful for us is actually the URB handbook. Because those are the numbers that are going to determine really what our financial position is and the timing of rate increases and whether we're over and under recovering from our customers. One thing to note is that this year there are no major changes to the financial statements. So there haven't been any reporting standard changes and we haven't done anything significant like, for instance, last year we had uh, done a lot of work to get asset values for a number of culverts that hadn't been captured before. So there are no changes like that this year. The next slide does that reconciliation I talked about. So the URB net income is $400,000. Then when you look at the different adjustments, we have to um, add back non-cash pension plan expense. We have to take debt servicing, and which is deducted from a URB basis, and add that back. 
and then we have to make some adjustments around depreciation, which are $17.8 million, but they offset each other. And then we have some different methods of depreciation between the two sets of accounting standards. And then we have gains on other comprehensive income. So other comprehensive income is an international financial reporting standard term. It's non-cash stuff, basically different types of investments or liabilities. We have to measure each year end based on what's going on in the market but they're unrealized gains and losses. So we had $3.7 million basically in unrealized improvements on investments that impact uh, our post-employment benefits that had to be added back. So when you do those adjustments, the IFRS total comprehensive earnings are $16.1 million. The rest of the presentation, I'm really gonna focus on the URB numbers because that's what's meaningful for us. So our assets increased by 3.4% to $1.4 billion. And the increases in our assets are driven by the fact that we've got a lot of capital work underway that's being completed. Our capital work in progress is actually increased $5.1 million over last year to $29.6 million. Mm -hmm. Our major projects underway right now include the AMI uh, Advanced Metering Infrastructure Project, the JD Klein filter replacement project that's at our Pockwalk treatment plant, and the Lake Major Dam replacement. Our utility plant and service has actually increased by 3.5% to $1.28 billion. And the capital additions this year are $80.7 million. Capital additions are projects that have completed during the fiscal year. So they move out of capital work in progress, they get set up as an asset on our books. The projects that completed this year include the Aerotech Wastewater Treatment Facility, that was a $24 million project, the Fall River Water Servicing Project, which was a $10.2 million project. We've installed $6.6 .6 million of AMI meters this year, so that's set up as an asset. And finally, we have a main lining program, which completed, and that was $4.2 million. On the other side of the balance sheet, we have our liabilities. Our liabilities also increased slightly, by 3% to $349 million. And what I'm gonna focus on here isn't so much the uh, increases as the decreases. I wanna speak to the fact that our long-term debt is down by $8.2 million and our total debt, including the current portion, is $208.2 million. We're well within the municipality's restrictions for debt servicing ratios, so from a perspective of debt management, we're doing well right now. We do have some contingent liabilities, and uh, we always make an allowance of one to two million dollars just in case any of the outstanding legal claims that we might have going at any point in time get settled against us, so we do have an allowance for that. And just uh, reflecting back on the regional development charge and our other cash reserves, we do have an increase in the regional development charge and our other cash reserves. The total balance has increased by $13.9 million. That's partially due to timing, so We've had the regional development charge in place for five years now, so we're collecting in cash. We put it in a reserve. As we have infrastructure projects that service new growth, we're drawing down from that reserve. And we have a significant amount of RDC projects that are going to be occurring within the next five years, so that reserve is gonna be uh, getting drawn down again. So moving along into the income statement, this slide shows a summary of our handbook results. So you can see our operating revenues are $138 million. Uh, this is a slight increase over last year. It's a 0.2% change, very slight increase. Uh, the reason our revenues were up, uh, partially related to growth. We had over 600 new customer connections this year. And also, there's a bit of a one-time gain the year that we're doing meter replacements because we're replacing meters, in some cases, that are past their useful life, so they may not have been registering accurately. 
as meters age, the consumption they record actually declines. So when we install a new meter, there is a slight gain if we're replacing a really old meter. So that's what's contributing to that increase in revenue. On the operating expense side, our operating expenses were $7.3 million more than last year, or 7.3%. Uh, a lot of what's going on in operating expenses relates to um, just delivery of service, basically. We had uh, our operating expenses. Uh, we're tracking fairly well with budget this year in terms of uh, depreciation. You can look at our bottom part of the slide, though, and see that our non-operating expenses are below budget. We were below budget there by $1.1 million, or 3.5%. That's due to the fact that we didn't issue as much debt this year as we thought we would, so our debt servicing is down, and that relates to the timing of capital projects. So although debt servicing was down this year, we'll catch up. Uh, with debt servicing uh, in future years when those projects that we were going to do complete and we issue debt after projects are complete. The bottom rows of this slide talk about our pension plan expense. It was relatively on par, just increased slightly compared to last year. And the other comprehensive income line at the bottom is the one that I was referring to. Those are the non-cash you know, gains and losses that we have to record on the income statement. So on a URB handbook basis, when you look at this, uh, you can see that there is a small deficit of $1 million. And this next slide will show you if the results from water, wastewater, and stormwater um, when you back out those non-cash items, the other comprehensive income, we have a loss in water services of $402,000. We have a loss in wastewater services of $3.1 million. We have a loss in stormwater of $1.2 million. And the bottom section of this slide just breaks down our results by a, a different method. Instead of showing you by service, water wastewater service, stormwater service, it breaks it down between regulated and unregulated. So our regulated activities had a loss of $6.1 million. Our unregulated activities had a surplus of $1.3 million. When you add those two together, you get the loss of $4.8 million. So our operating and non-operating expenses, I did discuss operating expenses. Uh, administration and pension was over budget. Most other categories were under. Depreciation was slightly under budget. Debt servicing was significantly under budget. That's the timing issue I spoke to earlier with debt not being issued. And another good news story is that our dividend to HRM slightly increased, and it was $5.2 million this year. And I believe this is the first year we've been above $5 million in terms of the dividend we returned to the municipality. So the dividend we pay to the municipality is really a grant in lieu of taxes because Halifax Water does not pay property taxes like a normal uh, commercial entity, for example. So comparison to forecast, our last forecast, we told you that we would have a loss of $4.9 million. And just moving back to uh, the slide, we have a loss of $4.8 million. The differences were revenue was $1.1 million higher, operating expenses were $1.3 million higher, which partially offsets the, the revenue gain, and then there's some little changes in non-operating expenses, and then we also have the, uh, the other comprehensive income, the non-cash stuff that we only record at the end of the year. So when you take the, the numbers all together, um, I'm just showing again the net loss after the other comprehensive income backing us around to the accrual number, not the cash base number. And you may wonder why it's okay for us to have a loss on a URB handbook basis. It's okay for us to have a loss on a URB handbook basis because we have accumulated operating surplus of $15.6 million. Right now that exceeds our target surplus of uh, 3 to 5%. 
So from a risk management perspective uh, and following common standards like the Government Finance Officers Association, we should be maintaining an accumulated operating surplus or unrestricted cash reserves of 3 to 5 percent. That's just to mitigate if something <coughs> happens and the utility has a crisis that there is a cash reserve that we can continue to operate. Our budgeted deficit for next year is $14 million, which will draw that surplus down to $1.6 million by March 2020. So our goal as a utility is not to make a profit. Our goal is to break even. So a good year for us is coming as close to zero as possible. So we're not stressed about the fact that we've got a budgeted loss this year of $14 million. In all likelihood, we'll have a loss, but it'll probably be slightly less than that. We're three months into the year now. Um, but we do know that we will probably have to file to adjust rates in 2020. And it has been a long time since we've done a rate application. We have not adjusted rates for service since April 1, 2017. So the rate application that would occur sometime in 2020 would be for water and wastewater rates, not for stormwater rates. There would be no changes to stormwater rates envisioned at this time. And we're continuing to focus on capital. Our capital expenditures and our capital budget this year is $77.3 million. So in summary, we have a clean audit opinion. The financial position continues to be strong and consumption cost containment and capital expenditures will continue to be areas of focus in the new fiscal year. And we do have a report in your package in the information section on our cost containment program. Our total cost containment program over the last uh, six years has resulted in cost containment initiatives of approximately $5.4 million. So that report will get filed with the Utility and Review Board uh, by June 30th of this month. Thank you. Thank you very much. The recommendation, just recommend is that the Board approve the March 31st, 2019 Halifax Regional Water Commission Audit Financial Statement prepared using international financial reporting standards. I think we already had it. No, we're talking about it. So we need a vote. No questions. Any questions? Oh, sorry, any questions? I'll just cap it. I don't know. Okay, you're good. Never mind. Is there any questions on the uh, audit? No. Question? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Carried on. Motion carried. So the next item is the Halifax Regional Water Commission Employees Pension Plan Audited Financial Statements for the year ending December 31st, 2018. I so move. Second. Is there a presentation, Kathy, on that as well? There is, and you'll be pleased to know it's much shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Though it's much more exciting. So this is the third full year uh, since we did our last actuarial evaluation in 2016. It's our third full year since our pension plan was redesigned. And we are pleased to report that the, the financial position of the pension plan has significantly improved. The reason we bring the pension plan financial statements to the Halifax Water Board is because the Halifax Water Board are actually the trustees of the Halifax Water Employees Pension Plan. So our pension plan is invested in the HRM Master Trust. Right now we're approximately 6% of the Master Trust. And just reflected on this slide as a reminder are the changes we made when we did the pension plan redesign. We changed the balancing of uh, the current service contributions between the employees and the employer, um, some sharing of special payments for unfunded liability. We made some changes to indexing. We implemented a frozen plan cap for maximum pension. And we changed the pension formula from 2% best five years to 2% best seven years. So the pension plan is actually in a small surplus position. This is the first time since probably around 2000 that the pension plan's been in a surplus position. 
And uh, the next report is the actuarial evaluation, which speaks to that in, in detail. But the net of assets available for benefits, we have $126 million. That's an increase of 5.6%. Pension obligations are $124 million, which was a 2.4% increase. So the net surplus in the pension plan is $2 million at this point in time, which is an improvement over the $1.7 million deficit we had in the pension plan at December 31st. 2017. And the increases in net assets, contributions are the main drivers. Um, in the increase in the fair market value of assets is down. It wasn't as good a year for investments in 2018 as it was for 2017. This is something that has impacted our, our plan and also impacted the HRM pension plan as a result of the fact that we're invested in the same things under the HRM Master Trust. The pension obligation increase, our accrued benefits and interest um, is $12.5 million. So accrued benefits and interest, basically that's the value of the service that employees have earned this year. So every year that an employee works, they are earning a pension entitlement that we record as an expense, it gets set up as a liability, so that's the, the increase that is a result of that. And you can see in the numbers down below that the pension obligations at the beginning of the year, so that would have been January 1, were $121 million. At the end of the year, they're $124 million. And there are a lot of little differences in between that caused that net change of about $3 million. A lot of them are driven by changes in actuarial assumptions and changes in the, the uh, accrual of benefits as employees earn them. So in summary, we have a clean audit opinion on the pension plan. Grant Thornton are also the auditors of the pension plan. The plan continues to improve. The last plan surplus was January 1, 2000, 18 years ago. Returns of the HRM Master Trust were lower, but they still remain positive. Uh, the changes resulting from the January 1, 2019 valuation are very positive for our plan, and our next actuarial evaluation is not scheduled until January 1, 2022. And we have any questions on that? have the motion. Mm -hmm. So all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Carry none. Motion carried. So the next item on the agenda is Halifax Regional Water Commission's Employees Pension Plan January 1st, 2019 actuarial validation. So do you want to take this one? Yeah. This is because you're the <coughs> It's recommended that the board approve the recommendations contained in the report, actual valuation herein, therefore called the evaluation, as January 2019, including one approved changes to the employer and employee rate pension current service contributions effective immediately upon updating the payroll software to accommodate and rectify to January 1st, 2019, and two, endorsed the release of the actual report to the Pension Benefits Committee and to all employee groups. I so move. Second. 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 <laughs> Details. <coughs> so that's on the presentation? Is there a presentation? There is no presentation, no. but there are three pieces of information I did want to share. One I've already shared that the pension plan does have a small surplus. The other piece of information is good news. Uh, so the Water Commission in, in the past has been making going concern special payments. As a result of this valuation, there is a special payment of $825,000, $825,500 that actually is eliminated as a result of this valuation. 
the current service cost contributions for employees is reducing to 10.34%. The employer contribution is increasing slightly from 985 to 10.34%. So our plan is back to a 50-50 cost share between employees and employer. And when you take the savings on the special payment, which will be offset by the increase in the <coughs> employer's contributions, we will still have the net savings. We estimate <coughs> that the commission will save between two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars this year, but we won't know the amount of savings for sure because we're in the process of doing the retroactive wage calculations as a result of the new collective agreements. So we have to do those retroactive wage adjustments and let them flow through the system, and then we'll be able to calculate with accuracy what that savings will be. So I'll report on that at a future meeting. That's it. Any other questions? So we have the motion on the table. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. I would like to mention that we met in camera with the auditors, with the staff, and there are no concerns at this point in time with the audit. Yeah, so noted. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the Group Extended Health Benefit Enhancements and Annual Renewal. Yeah. And so, <coughs> so, motion. That it's recommended, this is to recommend that effective August 1st, 2019, Halifax Water enhance the current plan to include the following. A glucose monitoring system, increase the calendar year maximum from 400 to 600 for speech therapists, psychologists, occupational therapists, and chiropractic, and podiatrists, is it? Sure, all yeah. the podiatrists. Oh. Extended health benefit maximums do not change for retirees after the age of 65. So moved. Second. Any questions? Is there a presentation, Kathy, on this? There's no presentation. I will say that the uh, net cost is $9,600 and that it's funded, uh, there's a 1% increase in the uh, rates for the medical and dental plan and 0.33% is being paid from a surplus that's within our medical and dental plans. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Any questions for Kathy? Mm -hmm. The motion's on the, on the table. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Yes. Such an item. It's a capital project. It's Quarry Road Integrated Project Additional Funding com Component Water for $464,000. Uh, <coughs> The motion is that the Halifax Water Board approve additional funding in the amount of $193,000 for the water component of the Quarry Road Integrated Project for a total revised cost of $464,000. I so move. Second. Is there any questions? Is there anything you'd like to add, Carol? Yeah, just to make a comment, uh, Madam Chair, uh, this one certainly is a, is an added item. We just got the, the latest tendering results. We want to make sure we had the opportunity to bring it uh, towards the board. <coughs> Uh, overall, the project cost is uh, roughly the same as original estimate, but the water was uh, was uh, elevated as, as a result of the tender. Uh, so, because we have specific rate basis for each of our three services, we're required to come back and get that blessing from the board. So that's why we've come back strictly just for the water component of the project for an extra $193,000. But things are going well. It's an integrated project, of course, with HRM, so we take advantage yes. of that synergy with, uh, with the municipality. Hearing no questions, do you have a question? Well, just one thing. So it was an unavoidable need. I was just reading that that's so that's the money that you tap into for first situations like this. Um, the unavoidable need refers to a policy we established quite some time back to make sure that we always look at all of our capital projects in the lens uh, envisioned by the integrated resource uh, plan that we developed. And it was a no regrets policy. Right. In other words, we're doing it for all the right reasons. Is there so a the corresponding the, reserve for unavoidable needs. Uh, no, these are all standard part of the of our of our budgets, our capital budgets. But it's a policy that makes sure when we do a capital uh, budget, we we look at it as so it's absolutely <coughs> grounded in in what we would project in our integrated resource plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And in the report, you've indicated where you're getting that additional funding yes. from. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were able to keep it within the overall umbrella of the capital budget. Okay. So the motion's on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay. The information reports. So I don't know, there's several. I can't see the record. We didn't put any of them on the agenda, so we're not up to the discussion. So we don't have So if I have a question on one of the reports, can I ask? Sure. You're the chair. If anybody could ask, do both. Okay. So under the, um, I'm trying to find which one it is now. Um, under the financial operations report, you, you, you have a, uh, a list of uh, NSC non-compliant. You have TSS non-compliant issues for Dartmouth, Springfield, and North Preston. Do we know why that occurred? Uh, we can certainly. Uh, Which number is Yeah. Which information? Is it? It's uh, one eye. One eye. One, one eye. eye. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there is a report. Um, Kathy has that up yeah. on the screen now. Thank you, Kathy. Oh. Yeah, I can speak to those numbers. Uh, I've got a much better question. Yeah. I'll wait until yeah. it comes up there. So. Um, my screen is different than that screen. It's telling me my PC ran into a problem and needs to restart. Uh -oh. So I'm going to pass the uh, you Give me the dongle. I'll take it from here. Yeah. It's got the blue screen of death. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> little hamsters running around. That's a good sign. Second long enough. No, it's not clean. Yes, I don't think. Oh, there, there we are. Okay, we're live and in color. Yeah. Hey, we really are in color, yes. yes. Uh, so, there's there's just, there. so you can see yeah. the three red boxes there. Uh, the Dartmouth uh, is just slightly over the, uh, the 40 um, limit for total suspended solids. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, that could have been. Uh, from uh, any number of uh, rainstorms in combination, right. that can you know cause some uh, yeah. some upset. So yeah. that's the good news is that's not too far from the uh, requirements of the operating permit. Similar in Springfield Lake, that's a smaller system. Um, that one is even more susceptible to wet weather <coughs> events uh, and can be upset quite easily. And you'll see in comparison to the 20 li uh, limit, that's actually greater than, of course, uh, tertiary. That's in between tertiary and uh, and secondary, uh, just greater than secondary treatment than 20. Uh, milligrams per liter. So uh, we're at 27 there. So again, just uh, probably a combination of wet weather events. And similarly, North <laughs> Preston, very close there. North Preston actually is a tertiary plant, and that's why the total suspended solids is set at 10 milligrams per liter. Yeah. And we came in at 13, so just above. So I would suggest all those three would be related to uh, wet weather events. Just the spring event, and, yeah. and, and the runoff uh, in, uh, from, from the winter. But uh, otherwise, fairly close to our, our, our yeah, because the last um, committee that we had, they were, you had met all the... They were all green. They were all green, green. which is, yep. I was just curious yep. as to why that we had those three. Yeah, so from time to time we could yep. certainly see that. Uh, although one thing I should point out, uh, pleased to report that uh, uh, we just signed our memorandum of understanding with uh, Dalhousie to do research on wastewater treatment, and our first plant up to take a look at is Dartmouth. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and, and because of that, you know, sensitivities uh, of, of, uh, of an advanced primary treatment plant, being susceptible to wet weather uh, events, so we're going to uh, start in on that one right away to make sure we stay within yeah. compliance. Okay. Staying on that report, I just have one more question. Yeah. Under the, the combined uh, sewer, sewer overflows, a lot of these overflows seem to be caused by um, obviously rain events, but also blockages in, uh, by degree. Do we have a maintenance schedule where we clean these out on a regular basis and these are just because? Yes, I mean, sometimes they can be an anomaly. I mean, you could go down and clean one out yeah. every week. And if something happens uh, unbeknownst to staff, uh, we'll get alarms, of course, when they do get blocked. Right. Okay. Uh, but certainly, um, uh, we absolutely have a, a program to okay. visit these sites on a regular, yeah. regular basis. No, I just noticed that all seems to be the same reason. I was just wondering yeah. if we had a maintenance schedule. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you. That was the only questions I had on the information reports. Anybody else have any questions on the reports? So that concludes our meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you very much. But uh, I know we have some audience members here and people are listening at home, but we want to uh, thank you, Carl, for your years of uh, dedication and service to Halifax Water and to the um, residents of uh, HRM. We want to appreciate all what you've done yep. for us as thank an organization. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with you uh, during uh, your tenure on the board and, and your time before as well. Yes, sir. So, okay. Thank you very much for your contributions. And we also should, uh, Kathy, your, uh, your reins are coming up soon, and so you'll be taking over. So we have to uh, congratulate Kathy O'Toole yes, on being the new general manager of Halifax Water. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry.